the news headline tonight at six o'clock on Friday. This week, uh, Bishop Anthony Pogo receives his COVID-19 vaccination at the Montgomery Hall. Local schools, our schools are reporting huge attendances of children returning with enthusiasm of joy and joy. The playground in the churchyard is all but finished. It just needs to be signed off by the safety inspectors and will be open for play uh, this coming week. Uh, let's go in depth to some of those stories now. Well, as most of you will know, the Montgomery Hall has been used as a vaccination centre uh, for the COVID-19 vaccination since the middle of January. Thousands of people have now been vaccinated in our church community hall. It's been a great pleasure to welcome them uh, day by day, and this will continue for several weeks to come. This week, we were delighted to welcome Bishop Anthony Pogo, a member of our church, a man who you know works closely with the Archbishop of Canterbury and uh, works with churches all around the world. We were delighted to have Bishop Anthony uh, agree to have his vaccination filmed. In fact, there's a special film we've put up on our St. Mark's Kennington YouTube channel, uh, documenting a little bit longer than we've got time for here. But this is the highlight. This is the moment uh, where he receives his jab. In goes the needle. And Bishop Anthony agreed to have this filmed in order to express his support, his endorsement of the vaccine program. He is recommending everyone who has a chance to receive this vaccination, this protection against the virus. And moving next door from the Montgomery Hall, we go to Archbishop Tennyson School. This is the outside of our church high school, Archbishop Tennyson School for boys and girls. It's been going for 330 odd years. Um, and like all schools uh, this week, saw the return of pupils and they have returned in great numbers. Lots of our local schools are saying they've had the highest percentage attendances ever known. Children absolutely delighted to be back in the classroom, in the playground with friends and having face to face lessons. I know uh, parents are by and large pretty happy as well to have handed over the homeschooling uh, back to the teachers in class. Uh, Sim Mark's Primary School, I was in there this morning and they also were rejoicing at uh, the vibrancy, the joy and enthusiasm of pupils learning. Archbishop Tennyson's has some new improved playground equipment and here are some banners. Uh, we wouldn't disturb them by going through the gates and doors but we get a quick glimpse as it were of what's going on uh, from these banners. And coming now to the uh, churchyard, this is the fantastic progress which has been made this week. Uh, renovated slide, this is the one piece of equipment uh, surviving from the previous playground. It's been uh, treated, painted, improved. Uh, these are the new bits of equipment which have been put in. Uh, here's a swing, it's tied up. It won't be tied up too long, it's just uh, been tied up so it can't be used yet. Almost. Look at this lovely soft play uh, surface to land on, a little bit of a climbing wall, a bit of a challenge there. If that's too easy, try the ropes. Uh, lots of things to play on. The builder's fence will be removed in a few days' time. We're just waiting for the safety people to come and sign it all off and say everything is screwed down properly. Uh, we just get rid of a little bit of rain. Look at the way it goes through that hole. Isn't that lovely? It goes round and round. Very soon there'll be a child sitting in there in the dry. Um, there'll be children going down these slides. That will be fun. Uh, a few weeks ago, we looked at a verse uh, from Zechariah, which said that the sound of children playing was a sound of renewal, a sound of the kingdom, a great city to grow up in. Uh, and we look forward to probably by this time next week, I'm pretty sure children will be playing. Let's go down the side. We There we go. Uh, this playground is almost ready uh, for the enjoyment of the children of the church and the community. It is another really good news story. Well, there are three bits of good news to report on this week. Good news. What good news have you heard? I hope you've had some good news amongst all the disappointing, discouraging news that we hear uh, around us. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 30 says, light in a messenger's eyes brings joy to the heart. Good news gives health to the bones. Proverbs 25 says, like cold water to a weary soul, is good news from a distant land. So I hope uh, the good news I've given you will give you health uh, to the bones. I hope it will be like uh, cold water to a weary soul. Isaiah says, uh, those who have good news have beautiful feet. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, 
who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation. And uh, the servant whom God uh, said uh, would come through Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah has these words about God's servant. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. And when we get to the New Testament, the Gospels say Jesus went around proclaiming good news. He proclaimed the good news of the kingdom. Uh, he proclaimed good news to the poor. Uh, Mark's gospel, our gospel, chapter one, verse one says the beginning of the good news about Jesus. And uh, the first words that Mark records Jesus as saying in Mark chapter one, verse 15 is this. The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Well, you know, even more than the good news of vaccinations, even more than the good news of schools returning. Even more good news of the children's playground, almost ready for play and action, is the good news of Jesus. We as a church have good news for the world. Not just good advice, not a good tip, but news. This has happened. Let me tell you, historically, God sent Jesus to earth to become like us, to experience life on earth, and then eventually to go to the cross, to take our sins, our weaknesses, our sicknesses, our stress everything on himself, and then to rise again to new life. We're getting close to Holy Week, just a couple of weeks away, uh, and then Easter, where we come to the heart of the good news, the death of Jesus, and then the resurrection. That is the heart of the good news which we share. As we rejoice in the things which encourage us, some of the little bits of news I've shared uh, from around uh, the parish, even more, let's just say thank you, God, for the good news of Jesus. Come and rejoice and share that good news this Sunday. And this Sunday is Mothering Sunday. Do you remember last year, Mothering Sunday at the end of March was the first Sunday where we were told that the church couldn't open for reasons we understand. Uh, but that was the first church, first Sunday where we said there's no meeting in the church building in person. That was Mothering Sunday. So we were not able to celebrate it together. This Sunday, we can. If you're able to, do come and worship with one another uh, on Sunday morning at 10.30. Our evening service for the next couple of Sundays will still be online only, but we'll be meeting in person this Sunday. I think that's good news. It's also good news that it will be available uh, on live stream for those unable to be with us. But let's just take a moment. Thank God for the good news of Jesus. Father, thank you for the things which have encouraged us this week. In a world where there is so much bad news, uh, so many things which dispirit us, discourage us. Uh, Lord, we thank you that we can hold on to good news. Uh, Lord, we pray for those who've suffered bad news this week. Pray for the family and friends of the lady who was kidnapped and killed from Clapham. Lord, our hearts go out to that family and those mourning and those affected in such terribly bad news. But nevertheless, we thank you for the good news, the good news of Jesus. There is indeed light in our darkness. There is indeed hope in our despair. There is even life in our death. So encourage us to be men and women, boys and girls, who live, breathe and believe the good news of Jesus. As the community of good news, let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.